Um, good morning, good morning, wonderful people. Um, what a beautiful morning it is here in the other side of the world, Nigeria, to be precise. And it's situated in uh, West African countries. Um, it's in western part of African country and then, then we are over 200 million people the population is quite high and then they are estimating that we are going to grow even more in the next 10 years we will be 300 and something million according to the people that call themselves wise men but um, as far as I'm concerned I don't know if there will be 10 years to come Jesus Christ is coming very soon, so if you are preparing yourself for the 10 years of 300 million people in Nigeria, I think you are joking and maybe wasting your time. What you need to do now is to think about what today and tomorrow is coming and is bringing on the table. Uh, tomorrow is um, Sierra Leone prisons. We are heading on the 16th to Sierra Leone. And what are we going to do? What's our business in Sierra Leone? I'm in Nigeria, and that's what my people are saying. What's your business in Sierra Leone? Um, we say, Go ye and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28. The Great Commission is something that every one of us ought to be engaged in. We must be involved in. Yeah? Uh, I don't need from, I don't need from audible at all. Anybody hear me? I'm not sure if um, anybody's hearing me. Okay, um, I hope everybody's hearing me anyway. Uh, like uh, what I was saying, we are, we are on this dispensation that we must go out there to reach out everyone. It doesn't have to be uh, your tribe, it doesn't have to be your native, it doesn't have to be your continent, a con person from your country, it doesn't have to be uh, your brothers or your sisters. You have to reach out to everyone because Jesus Christ came for all. He died for everyone. I and mean, do you know one of the things that I have so much desire that you will do is that you put your hands, if you are working, if you are at work and you cannot be able to follow me to go to prisons, I want you to put your money. Um, I'm so much expecting, I am truly, honestly expecting everyone to engage in this mission. Let your money go for you. We have a lot, we have a lot at hand. I've uh, spoken to some of my partners in Ceylon and they told me that the first prison we are going to is over 2,500 inmates and to be honest with you, <laughs> flight ticket alone took our money. We don't have money to be able to feed these guys. But I'm going there with faith because the person who owns the job is my father in heaven, doesn't belong to me, which means if uh, if that's his job then he will make provision for his job and uh, he can't just come from heaven and throw down the money he will use people that he has touches his heart so your prayer will be god touch my heart let me be one of those that will be able to help these people try your possible best to pray that prayer and then when you finish praying that prayer then you take a bold faith bold step of faith start with what what you have and then god will give you more Put hand in that your wallet, in that your bank account, or whatever. Make your transfer to whatever. It is, just for the sake of these dying prisoners. Um, I heard what happened in Anambra recently. A very rich man that um, that was uh, ambushed by the government or something like that. And this rich man also is a very good. Um, it's a guy that has been on my WhatsApp all the time. I've been sending him so much videos about. Uh, prisoners and so on, asking them to support, went to his house, give them flyers, 
give um, give him all kind of things for him to partner with us, even to help us. He's a very worthy guy. He doesn't want to. I tried with uh, Senator Baribe. You don't want to help Senator ba uh, um, Dino Milaye. All these big guys are equally mad with them. All of them, I have their personal contacts. I've sent them our videos, and none of them could give you one naira. Just they think that they are they are criminal. They should die there. But look at what is happening now. All those that you refuse to save, they're gonna start visiting you all one after the other because it's exactly what you you, you cultivate. You will rape. If you don't want to rehabilitate your country, change your country from criminality, they will start shooting you guys one after the other. You see now what's going on everywhere. They have started hunting the rich men. So nobody is safe. If you think that we are the only poor that is not safe, you are not safe yourself. That's why I've been working hard for the nine years, begging all of you for nine years, meet you one-on-one, -on -one, every one of them, but they cannot help, honestly. And some said to you, uh, you have to uh, send message to Bukubana. You have to meet Kubana. Yes, I have his direct number. I've sent the videos that as you people were saying. I've sent the video, but let me tell you something. Except God helps a man. Nothing can make human being do. Except God builds a city, a builder builds in vain. Except God watches over city, a watchman watches in vain. So you understand, I'm not hoping on any man, I'm not trying, but I'm just telling you that this rich man you are seeing, is either they soak their hand in a courtism, or they have went to the water to get power to make wealth or whatever, because they can't help anything as such as we are doing. They don't want to do that. And I can also assure you that I've gone to many churches in Nigeria, the big GOs in Nigeria. I've sent them my flyers. I've sent them the works we are doing. Some of them can only ask me to come and join and be the member of their church. Then they will give me cars and house to live in and all that. It is an error. So please, you masses, you poor ones like me, I'm begging you, I'm depending on you guys. God will touch your heart so you can support this work. Don't think I'm having support from government. No, God is my witness. Don't think, think I'm having support from any church. No, God is my witness. It's only you and I that I'm depending on. Let us do this work together. We must go to Sierra Leone and we must save lives. I'm living here on the 16th of this month and then I will be there for 10 days or more than that. We must touch as many prisoners as possible. So I'm expecting you all to please. Let me see. Betty want to say something. Let me um, bring Betty in here. I did. It's a connection fair. Betty, it's a connection fair. I don't know why. Maybe you have to um, turn your camera. To be rotated to be on the rotation rotating form yeah if you rotate your camera maybe so um every one of you please i'm asking you um do everything you can to make sure you are part of this outreach we are going to um basically Touch so many prisons as much as we can, as long as they respond. Because something that we don't like to do, our bounding based foundation don't like to do, is to go into a prison without giving the prisoners something to eat or drink. I think it's mockery. I don't want to be part of mockery. I want to do something and do it right. No matter how small it is, there are 2,500 and something prisoners in, in that uh, free town, and there are female prisoners as well. We have to make sure this is if it's loaves of bread, we give them the 2,500 and something of them, 2,500 bottles of drink. Let us give them something, although they are demanding for Gary. And do you know what shocked me? I asked them how much are they selling bag of Gary? It's almost $50 a bag. I was, what? Please, anybody who is in Sierra Leone who can help me to source Gary from a cheaper angle, please, if there's any Sierra Leonean person watching this video, help me source for cheaper source where we can get Gary cheaper, please. Because they say that they love Gary so much, they need Gary so much in the prison. So we can be able to carry some bags of Gary to them. If we can skip some of the bread and so on and get them Gary, I don't mind. Since it's was one of their best demand.
there that God bless you as you do. And then one more thing that I want to say to every Nigerian now. Nigeria is vulnerable. People in Nigeria are vulnerable. They are living in fear. They are so vulnerable that we need to pity people here right now. We should, those that are pranking, you should stop this scary pranking that you are doing. People are dying now in Nigeria because some people are misbehaving, especially this one that we just all of a sudden on the street where people are relaxing, eating their food and so on. One person will just say, ah, run up! And then everybody start running from we throw their food they will see fat women that you know that they had lately get heart failure you will run and panting and you know you are wasting people's life they will go home and die of heart failure and you think you are making jokes you are being users the day i will tell you this the day i will see that guy on the street and he does that i'm gonna knock him down i will just grab you give you a deck by the time you get up from the ground, you will know that what you are doing is not funny. If you want to do prank, make reasonable prank. Look at some of these evil pranks and so on. Make something reasonable, funny, that people will laugh and laugh if they try to scorn. But don't go and start making people their heart beat so fast. Creating fear and agony in society. And you bring a lady, a lady that never got married, you put her in the public, and say, can you take off your uh, can you take off your pants in the public? I give you ten thousand. Of course, you know she need money. And after you need the, taking her pants off, you tell her uh, it's a prank. Prank my foot. It let me know one day. See, I meet you when that. I will tell you get. I will start. I will collect your phone and give to the girl. Physically, I'm gonna mess you up. I don't want people misbehaving like this. So irritating. It's so annoying. Stop making the Nigerian ladies are very vulnerable now. Trust me, even if they are prostituting, I'll have nothing to say about it. I will never do it. I can do. I will preach Jesus Christ. But I will never condemn them because the situation, the circumstances have warranted that people can do whatever to survive. Have you been a hungry person before? Have you been in a situation whereby you about to even eat a flesh to survive? Like in Rwanda prison, where they eat flesh inside the prison to survive. Have you seen? Have you seen people in a situation whereby they have no choice than to steal bread to survive, to steal a bottle of mineral to survive? No, you haven't. You need to consider this thing that everybody are not living in Lakey or Banana Island. Everybody are not living in DGC. We are not living in Maitama in Abuja. We are many of the people that are not living in a very comfortable and in a very nice atmosphere. Some are struggling and fighting to, to, to eat bread. I am sincerely, sincerely from the bottom of my heart begging each and every one of you to please stop this nasty prank. You can't stop a very pretty girl going to school and you know that she's desperate to pay her school fees. And then you, all of a sudden you say to her, uh, uh, can you sleep with me for 20,000 naira? No, I can't do that. Okay, I'll give you 100,000. Can you sleep with me? And the girl, all of a sudden, they look around. Nobody's seen that. It's okay. Can we go to my hostel? You turn as you're going. You say, look, it's a prank. And you post such video. You made the girl a prostitute in the public. Are you, why must you expose her in that level? Because she's not a prostitute. She has no choice. I know we will say, uh, as a Christian, as a Christian, how many Christians in the church are not prostitutes? Once you sleep with a man that is not your husband and he gives you anything, you are a prostitute. So I don't know what people, how you people are judging. I don't know how you people are judging. I don't want to judge because, I mean, I myself, I was such a very bad man. In every sin you can name, I've committed them all. But yet, he never judged me to a point that you are judging. He never counted me worthless. He still see me as a proper child. He still said that I'm useful, that I'm that donkey that nobody has ever sat on. He still asked Jesus Christ to sit upon me and walk with me and use me. So who are you to judge God's elect? Let us be very careful on this prank. I am praying one day I will meet this guy that is scaring people. Trust me, he's not going to find it funny with me. He's not going to find it funny because people are having issues. Many people are dying for this. And especially this one that is wasting girls everywhere. Making people look miserable, take off your clothes in the public, sleep in the public, and won't even lie down in the public expecting the guy to jump on top of her. And the guy says it's a prank. Then you pay her exactly what you agreed on. Covenant is a covenant, agreement is agreement. 
Nigerians are so full of fraud and cheating. Everything is about cheating people to make your money because you want to get public. You want, you want your, your Facebook followers to grow or YouTube or whatever. You disgrace the whole lady, you mess her life up. I don't find it funny. But meanwhile, those that want to partner with Abounding Grace Foundation to go to Sierra Leone, we are living on system. So please send down your money. We have an our we have our account there. Make sure you. I want you to know what. If you want to be part of it, just send me a message. You see the same inbox. I want to be part of it. If you want to donate money, ask me to send you an account. I send you the account number. Abounding Grace. We have an account number in UK. We have an account number in Nigeria. We also have PayPal. Anyone that is suitable for you. Please let us help these prisoners in Sierra Leone. The flight ticket is almost a million, uh, one point something million naira now, but we bought when it was eight hundred something thousand naira. It's quite expensive to go by flight, but we have to. We have no choice. I can't go. There's no road ride today. So please let us help us, help us, so we can cover as many prisoners as possible before coming back to other prisons in Nigeria. Here, yeah, please, I'm begging you, help us. We need to help these people. It's all about life and death. These prisoners that we refuse to help today is the one that are coming now, hunting this rich man in Anambra that was shot the other day. These prisoners that we are asking to help today, they are the one going to come out now and start hunting all the rich men in Nigeria because they will definitely come out someday when their that, that time is up. If they are not helped, if they are not transformed, renewed, help to renew their mind, they will come out and become a menace each and every rich man in Nigeria. You are not secured. I don't care how many policemen you're carrying. I don't care. Did you see what happened in Anambra in Enugu? At the fan, your bus convoy. Did you see that? This must be deadly criminals that do all these things. If we meet them on time and get them out of crime, they will never have such a heart to kill policemen. What a brutal boys they are. To shot policemen in that manner. Look at some policemen, so one of them that run inside the place, they still kill him. It's a heartless act. It is not acceptable. We can't. And the only way we can stop is not by force. If you carry gun against them, they will still get you down because they are they have determined, they determined to die. The only way is to bring gospel into prisons. And you guys are sitting down there think I'm, 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 messing, I'm wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time. I'm saving your children. I'm saving your husbands. I'm saving your wives. I'm saving your families from being raped and kidnapped and killed. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring calmness and orderliness in our society. I'm not trying to come here to beg money for any, from anybody. I am here to put my own quota. I want to contribute my own quota in Nigeria. When P2B comes in next year, I will be part of the government and we will change this nation for good. That's what we are paying for. Every one of you, if you are a human being, never you vote any other party than a LP, Labour Party. If you are a human being. But if you are an animal, you can go ahead and vote whatever you want. Go ahead and vote APC or PDP. Yes, I'm saying it. If you are an animal, Go ahead and vote because you really want your country to read. I'm not saying this because I'm an Igbo man. I forget about Igbo after my ministry. You know, I, I go to Abroki, I go to anywhere outside Yoruba, whatever. I do most of my prison outside Igbo land. Let me tell you something. I am saying this because the only hope we have in Nigeria now is Labour Party. Peter and the Dati, two of them are the only hope we have now. If they fell, you are going to go into dungeon forever for life you are doomed for life and i'm telling you that most of nigerian population now will migrate they will move out of this country because there will be no hope i said if you are not voting for lp you are an animal if you vote for any other party you are really one of the problems we have in nigeria i'm saying it without being without being careful just to watch what is going to happen you see god is the only one that will help us in this but you need to do your own part and your own part is to get your pvc Make sure that you are part of what is going to happen in this country soon. And God bless you as you listen. If you want to be part of Australian uh, business, want to help the prisoners in Sierra Leone. I'll tell you what, many Nigerians are dying inside that prison if you don't know. I'll bring you a report later. Many, many of them. If you want to be part of it, feel free to be part of it. If you don't want to be part of it, it's okay. And God bless you. Bye bye.